We live in the ultimately shameless world today. The world in which streaming videos off of any website are available on your mobile device. The age in which the pornography industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry. The point of which, the agenda of which to, is to make sure every one of you is a consumer of filth in one way or another. That every man, woman and child is exposed to this stuff and they're hoping you are so you become addicted to it so you become yet another consumer. This is, this, is the, this is the gift of pornography to society. It's turning people into animals and perverts. And some of you unfortunately have that addiction. And you're watching this stuff online. And you're watching it and saving it on your apps and your mobile devices. And you don't feel bad about it anymore. You've justified it to yourself. And you feel bad about it once in a while, but you go back to it. And as a re you think, oh, well, I'm not, at least I'm not hurting anybody. At least I'm not doing it to anybody else. I'm just watching this stuff. It's okay. But you know what's happening to you? Inside your soul is being just gutted. You have no soul left inside of you. It's because your heart is so devoid of the fear of Allah because of the filth you've been watching all this time. It's turned you from a human being into an animal. A woman passes by and you, look, you, you see a piece of flesh walking by. You don't see a human being walking by that deserves respect. You check everybody out and everything out. You're, you're constantly gawking and staring. You, can, you have a hard time putting your eyes down. When you're on the subway, when you're on campus, when you're at work, you're walking down the street, you know, you just can't help. You see a billboard, you look at you take a second look, you see a third look. You don't miss any opportunity to just to, to, to violate your soul with your eyes. You're addicted completely. My brothers, specifically my brothers. And I know some sisters have this issue too. It's not a, it's a sad reality. This is a war. This is a war. This is more dangerous than any military war. This is the war that's destroying our souls. It's making its way into our homes. It's making its way, you know, if I want to protect my children from this stuff as much as possible. It's a, it's a very realistic thing nowadays. It's not far-fetched. And so I have to prepare my children for the filthy world that they're, they're going to be brought up in. And there's no escape from this stuff anymore. There isn't. It's everywhere. And I don't think that's by accident. I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm, I don't think that stuff is an accident. And what happens to you guys is you watch a video, you see something filthy, you click it, you click something else, you click something else, and you end up watching disgusting things. Especially when it comes to their privates, they guard them. They guard their shame. Brother, what's the solution? Should I get married? Like the guy who asked the other day, was, how can I get married right now? No, guys, the solution is not marriage. Because if you're a pervert, then you're going to be a pervert after marriage too. If you have no shame now, you will have no shame after marriage. Honestly, you, you think marriage is going to end your problems? No, your problem isn't marriage. Your problem is spiritual in nature. Your problem is psychological in nature. You need help. You need to stop this. You need to stop hurting yourself like this. You will have nothing. There will be nothing left inside you. I just had an email from a teenager who's addicted to pornography, an anonymous email, 14, 15 year old teenager. Says, I want to kill myself. I can't stop. I've been watching it since I was 11. My parents don't know. I read this stuff and I cry because there's not one, there's millions of Muslim kids like this. Millions of them. We have to help these people. We have to do whatever we can. And it, we don't have the trillions of dollars of advertising to counter that. We don't. The only thing we can do is have a mature conversation about this and teach our youth to deal with this and navigate this. We wage a war within ourselves against that tendency. And you've tried quit before and you go back again, and you go back again, and you keep falling into that trap. I know some of you have done that, you know, and you're struggling with it. But don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. And whatever it takes, if you just don't be alone, don't be by yourself. Be with good friends. Be outside, do, study somewhere else. Go to the library and study. Because you're, when you're by yourself, shaitan gets you. And if the fear of Allah isn't enough for you, at least the fear of other people will work for you. At least something's better than nothing. You know, this stuff, we have, we have to take these precautions. Don't give your 11 year old a smartphone. What were you thinking? That's not very smart. You know, <laughs> and marriages start falling apart. They have this virtual idea of what pleasure means. and They don't find pleasure in their spouse anymore. 
and there's great fitna that comes into the family. It destroys homes, Muslim homes. That's, that's what's happening in our world today. A lot of Muslims are affected by this quietly, silently. Uh, I was reading statistics and I found that some of the Muslim countries have the highest uh, viewing of pornography. Uh, firstly, you need to make tawbah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and constantly repeat that and you need to make a lot of changes in your life. And, uh, you know, part of what is said, obviously based on Islam, uh, you need to change the setting of your day. You need to increase your good deeds a lot. Because when you increase your good deeds, automatically your bad deeds begin to decrease. It's like a seesaw. So, if your salah is on time and your wudu is always intact and you read Quran often and you have the listening of good Islamic lectures and you're in good company and your, your PC or whatever you're watching this thing from is actually in public and perhaps maybe if you have a problem of the internet, cut it off. There are so many different ways of doing things but you have to be serious and you have to want to help yourself. You have to make sure that you are prepared to make drastic changes for the sake of Allah. Make sure that you have good company. Engage yourself in something constructive so you don't have as much time for this for something destructive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. What I believe is make a lot of dua to Allah to keep you away from haram. And we need to ask Allah and please, when you make a dua, be serious about it. Do not just make a dua to say, okay, I made dua but I'm still on pornography. I made dua but I'm still hooked on to masturbation. I've made dua, but no, make a dua with the intention of quitting and quit it. And if Shaytan can tap you once in the blue moon, perhaps, may Allah not do that to us, but if you're in tap, immediately get off it and immediately ask Allah's forgiveness. And tell yourself, this might be the last moment before I breathe the end. Imagine if there's an earthquake, imagine if there's a fire, imagine if suddenly you have a heart attack. I, I want to give you one true story. Wallahi, it's a true story. May Allah never do this to us. There was a family, and they were very, very religious. And the father was the head of the family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from shaitan. And the children were all religious based on the father. And when he died, he died in the company of two prostitutes with, two, with some alcohol bottles in his hands at a destination that was unacceptable. His children refused to attend his own burial. What happened? It was Shaitan. Shaitan who gave him a bad ending. We still make dua that Allah give him Jannah and forgive him. And Allah look at his good deeds. But who from amongst you would like to die while watching pornography and you have a heart attack? 